Previously on Drake Paragon. We're heading up to Newfoundland. This is a bit of a longer trip now, this leg. We're all just getting used to sailing and living with one another. Here we've got some chicken and salsa. You ever use these Cuban reels? Eh, it's now efficient. <laughs> we've got up every inch of canvas that we have. So did you wake up an hour early thinking that it was time for you to go on watch? Mm -hmm. How do you think that happened? Sometimes I pull in all the line just to take the seaweed off of the lure. Sunshine, perfect way. Five and a half knots. I suspected that we were going to have rain and fog. I wasn't expecting this beautiful sun and blue sky and warm temperatures and perfect mm. wind. It's amazing the shelter of the harbour, like when this is what it's like out here. Yeah. I know it was picking up anyway, but yep. it's a big difference. <sighs> I noticed that we're crossing the, uh, the Laurentian Canal. We're miles away from it yet, but south of us, maybe about four or five hundred miles. There is a depth of over 5,000 wow. feet. 6,492 feet. Yeah. Wow. So I'm wondering, it's like the abyssal plains, but it's crazy, crazy deep. 6,000 feet. Like, the whole area around here is like 5,600, 6,500 feet there. God, we've got so far to go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Get us in, John. Like, you have to keep zooming in. Zooming <laughs> oh, there we go. Wow. <laughs> Just keep sailing. Just keep sailing. <laughs> I'll set up the wind vane. And we'll, we'll switch from autopilot to wind vane. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yep. And then I've got more lines on the wheel here that connect to those. It's picking up. It's 15 knots now. Yeah. Almost six knots. Overground. If I had to choose between an autopilot and a wind vane on a boat, I'd definitely go for the wind vane. It doesn't use any electricity and it actually steers really well as long as you have wind to direct the fin in the air. boat turns too much to starboard then this will go like that and then the blue line gets pulled when we turn to port then it goes like this and then the red line gets pulled okay so that's hooked up correctly then so when you pull these lines it turns the whole fin and you want to get the boat on course, which it is by autopilot right now, and rotate that thing so that the fin is pretty much sticking straight up. That's step one. Step two. Let's go back here. Make sure this is tight. disengage the autopilot and then I will engage the wind vane. Here we go. Autopilot disengaged, wind vane engaged. And now I'll just see if we stay on course. <laughs>
Do you want me to have the main off a little? Sure. Yeah, and the jib too. Twenty knots, true wind speed. Or do you feel like keep going with the main for the moment? And yeah. Like when it starts to get dark, then we put a reef in. I think we don't need this diesel. I don't understand why we're not going faster. I'm telling you the truth. How can that thing read 20 knots? And the sail doesn't look like it's getting hit hard. It doesn't feel like jib it. or the main. This isn't 20 knots. This doesn't feel like 20 knots. I think it's. It? I think it's just because we're going downwind, like. Yeah, I guess so. You think that 20 knots of wind going downwind would make us go faster than five knots? The name's like kind of whopping. Let me get the preventer on it. We're up to five and a half knots. It was closer to six when we just let it out. It looks like the main is taking the wind from the jib. If we turn just a smallest amount more to port, then we'll be wing and wing. Yeah. For the moment, we're steady like this. We're almost six knots. Are you feeling tired? You want to take a, a nap? Take a nap? I might too. Yeah. I'm tired. So we're on six to eight, eight to ten, ten to twelve. I come on at eight. Eight. And then Mo comes, comes on, on at ten. ten. Yeah. Six twenty-one in the morning, and it's foggy. I guess about a mile of visibility in this fog. We have been going about five and a half knots since we left Lunenburg in about fifteen to twenty knots of wind out of the southwest, putting us on a broad reach starboard tack. You can see we're going east, northeast, and on the right half of the display, that's the radar, it's set to six miles out, and every ring is two miles. No radar contacts at this time. Uh, so 
so we've just had our first night and we're all a little tired <laughs> I am exhausted I can't wait to go back to sleep Mo's up next uh, her watch started at 6 but I'm giving her another hour I'm gonna wake her up at quarter of 7 so she can start her watch at 7 and do her watch from 7 to 9 instead of from 6 to 9 she threw up uh, pretty badly at the end of her last watch so I figure she could use the extra time to sleep uh, God, just getting back into the swing of of watch rotations our watch rotation is between the three of us is three hours on and six hours off during the day then we switch to two hours on and four hours off during the night um, schedule goes Aina, then me, then Mo, and then repeats. And I like that watch rotation because at night just everybody's really tired and three hours is a really long time. Two hours is much more doable. So, for my watch I've just been sitting here and looking right over at the chart plotter for much of the time and about every 10, 10 minutes just standing up and looking around uh, we saw a lot of ships last night as we passed through three shipping lanes in and out of Halifax and zoom out on the chart plotter a bit so you can see where we are First I'll switch it to full screen plotter, get rid of the radar for a moment, zoom out, we left Lunenburg here yesterday at around 1 in the afternoon, today is the next day, not quite 24 hours later, we've made it this far. And we're going to here, and then around the southeastern tip of Newfoundland, and then going north a bit to St. John's right there. <sighs> On the radar. And that's a report from this day view. I'm going to go off watch soon and sleep hard. Looking forward to making these guys some really good food, good hot food for lunch and dinner. Probably do cereal for breakfast. And I'll probably be asleep during that time. That looks great. Yeah, so uh this is a new one for me. What is it? It's called Christmas Sex in Mexico. <laughs> What's in it? Um, it's turkey, which is the Christmas. Oh, wow! There's sex, which is the unfertilized eggs. Then there's the... <laughs> in Mexico is the wrap. So. <laughs> if you want Tabasco or mustard or anything, we'll try and find a friend. Hey there! Must be started. He just made this amazing thing. Are you gonna try it? Jeez, it's even foggier than it was this morning at sunrise. Yeah, it was really clear here this morning. It was, huh? Now I remember that food tastes better on offshore voyages. <laughs> I don't know, this is actually some pretty good cooking. Like it is damn good! <laughs> this is the first time I've made this, I've never made it before. Did you name it yourself? Yeah. <laughs> the PG version is Christmas eggs in Mexico. I... And the, the, the non PC or non PG version is Christmas eggs in Mexico. <laughs> because it's unfertilized eggs. Some turkey who got a bit cheesy in a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> and it works? 
it works great. How'd you sleep? You slept good, yes? Yeah, really good. Yeah, at like six o'clock this morning at the end of my watch. After the sun had just come up, it was foggy. But I thought the sun would burn it off. And now it's much more dense than it was before. And it's now nine o'clock. It's nice and warm in here. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, this enclosure makes a big difference. Huh? Yeah, it's really comfortable. In colder weather, especially at night, when it's really windy, just to shield it from the wind. But keep some amount of heat in it as well. Like even just after cooking this morning, you can still feel the heat from, yeah, from the cooking. Yeah, Ah, uh, yeah. Alright, I'm going back to bed. Go on, I've seen a while. I'm got him, I'm in. Have a good watch! Bye. So it's, uh, it's my first watch of daybreak on Tuesday the 18th of June. As you can see, it's very foggy out. Right, I said that if I go out on deck, I set the watch commander off um, for say 10, 20 minutes. If I'm going to be out for 10 minutes, so if like something happens and I don't come back in, that I will the alarm will go off when I don't come back, and then one of them will get up and check up. Which makes sense considering I was only thinking if you fall overboard, you are you're toast. So right now we are doing just over 5 knots, we're doing about 5.3. Uh, the wind is gusting 18, it got up to 20 at one point. It doesn't really feel like it. Um, so trying to adjust the sails and maintain some sort of comfort. The jib is constantly flapping because uh, the waves are coming from the beam and then just making the, the sails flap because of it. Maybe if I got rid of the stay so there'll be more wind on the jib and it'll sail better. So we'll take it down if we lose speed I'll uh, put it back up again otherwise I'll leave it. Still a foggy day. Now we're at two in the afternoon. We've got this huge freighter crossing our bow. The closest point of approach for him is two miles. He's also showing up on radar right there. I'm on watch. I also just made lunch. And we're about to eat. Pasta salad. Pasta salad, tuna, rotini, pasta salad, frozen peas. Diced red bell pepper, sliced onion, rotini pasta, cans of tuna fish, and Italian dressing, and also parsley. And that's lunch today on Paragon, about a third of the way to St. John's on day two. So did you wake up an hour early thinking that it was time for you to go on watch? Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you think that happened? Just um, You read your watch wrong? No, I thought my watch was at 8, but I'd forgotten that we'd switched the 3 hour watches. I was supposed to be on at 9, not 8. So. Mm. Yeah, I think it's better with just 2 hours on at night. Like, 3 hours seems a little too long. Yeah, it's nice being able to just jump down afterwards. Because yep. you kind of feel yourself getting tired yeah. after 2 hours. And it's hard to, when you're woken up and it's your watch for the next two hours, it's really hard to get up. But as you're getting up, there's this 
thinking in my head of, well, it's only two hours, you know, by the time I'm up and sitting in the cockpit, it'll be an hour and 50 minutes, and then, you know, it'll be over real soon. And how are you? Hi. Hi, how's it going? Good. You look so much better now. It's because I'm laying down. Well, you did your washes great. How's the food? Good. You must be ravenous by now. After, like, losing all of yesterday's food in one go there. I had an apple this morning. I, I bet it was the best apple you've ever had. No. <laughs> no. 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 But then I had some beef jerky that actually went down well, I hope. We'll see. Well, you look great. Thank you. Yeah. Sure you don't want to sit up at the dinette with I'd the rest like of the personnel? I'm looking great. <laughs> okay. All right. So, I'm on watch now. You're up next. I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We've started listening to audiobooks, so we're going to leave you now. Right now we're listening to an audiobook by Dan Brown called Deception Point. Before that we listened to a couple of one hour long episodes of The Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. They were good. You like them? Because I mean, I hadn't heard them before. I yeah. Mean, I like them. Um, just the one with the librarian was good too. Yeah. And because uh, I didn't cr really know how it was going to play out. Yeah, the ending was a little bit unexpected. Those weren't even the really good ones. We've got like a hundred more Twilight Zone episodes in the radio audio format and some much better ones. Hmm. Yeah. So, well, I might watch, listen to some of them on watch. I... Ready for more Dan Brown? Yeah. <laughs> Across the Virginia woods. <laughs> How are you doing? Well, I heard you laughing at the storm a minute ago. You must be doing better. <laughs>